Okay, we're gonna pick up right where we left off in the last video. And of course, we set up our container and our main template for our grid. And of course, this is the finished product right here. And here are the CSS grid lines. Now, we're gonna talk all about this in a few minutes, so don't worry about these quite yet, but this really is the critical concept to understanding the CSS grid. Once you understand how these lines work, this whole process becomes very easy to understand. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and add our very first section right here. So let's flip over to our index.html and let's go ahead and add that. And we're just gonna add a div, we're gonna add a class, and we're gonna go ahead and call this section one. And then we'll do a similar thing with the text. We'll call this section one. And then let's go ahead and close out our div. And there we go, we've got our section one right here. So let's flip over to our style sheet and we'll start adding the code for this. And let's just go ahead and take this and copy and paste this. You know, I always like to copy and paste. And of course, we'll call this section one, which was the name of our class. Now let's go ahead and get rid of these properties. We don't need them anymore. And the first property that we're gonna add here is grid hyphen column. That's what we need. And then let's go ahead and actually we're not going to add a value to this yet. Let's go ahead and add our second property and that is going to be for our rows. So that is grid hyphen row. And so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and explain how both of these work. And so that means we're going to go ahead and talk about these column lines and these row lines. Now the way this works is you have two sets. Again you have the column lines, you have the row lines. You can see I've made the column lines in red and here's column line one, here's column line two, here's column line three, and here is column line four. And you can see the row lines are in black. So row line one goes this way, here is the second row line, here is the third line, and here is the fourth. And this equates to our finished product over here. Think about this. Here is column line one, here is column line two, here is column line three, and here is column line four. And the same thing with the rows. Here would be row line one going this way, here would be row line two, and so on and so on. So you get an idea of how these work. This is all you really need to know when you want to lay out your sections. You need to know what column lines you're going to specify and what row lines you're going to specify. And once you get that down, once you understand that, this becomes very easy. Now, if you think about it, take a look at column line one and column line two. That creates our section one right here, right? Section one is between column line one and column line two. It is also between row line one and row line two. You see how that works? This equates to this right up here. It's very simple. Now, section two, that's between column line two and column line three. And section three, that's between column line three and column line four. Section two and three are also between row line one and row line two. So you see how this works? So if you want to take a guess here, what row lines do you think constitute section four? Well, row line two and row line three. Now if you think about this for a second, let's say we added another column here, a fourth column, and we put it right over here. We would need a fifth column line, right? We would need yet another line. So for every column that you add, you need an extra column line. That's how it works. And same thing with the rows. If we added another row down here, we would need a fifth row line. So now for section one, we need to say, hey, we're going to start from column line one right here. So we're gonna put in a value of one, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and close this out. Now, what are we saying here? We're saying, hey, I want you to start from column line one and end at column line two. Now you might say, wait a minute, we didn't put in a stop point. We only put in a start point. And that's because we're gonna do that in later videos. For now, we're just gonna enter in the starting position, which is column line one, right here. Now, if you do not put in a stop position, CSS will assume that you wanna stop at the next line, which is column line two. And it works the same way with the grid rows. We are gonna say we want to start out at grid row one right here. And since we're not gonna specify a stop point, it will automatically assume that we wanna stop at row line two. So we're gonna go ahead and put in a one here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste the rest of the CSS code because we've gone through this in many other videos. So basically what we're gonna do is give this a background color of blue right here. We're gonna make the color of the text itself white. We're gonna align it right here and the font size is gonna be 20 pixels. This isn't really anything we need to go through. We've done this many times in other lectures, but these are the two new ones that we wanted to focus on. So let's go ahead and save this and then let's fire up our sheet and make sure all of this works. So let's actually go ahead and close this out and then we'll go ahead and fire this up in Chrome and let's see what we get. 
and take a look at that. It worked perfectly. And look how it's sizing it appropriately. See that? And you can see here, you can kind of see if we added a section two, it would kind of fill up here and the section three would fill up here. So you can see how it all works. So that is a perfect start. And you can see how these column lines work now. It's actually very simple to use once you understand the concept of how the grid lines work. Okay, in the next video, we're going to fill out the rest of the sections. See you then.